Now the next session is about to commence and I can't be happier once again. Why? Because we are about to invite Ms. Rani Mukherjee once more on stage and with her we would like to invite Mr. Rajiv Masand, a distinguished Indian film critic as we all know. Yes. A profound Big journalist. round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Rani Mukherjee. So this is a fire, fireside banter which we are looking forward to and we are waiting for Mr. Rajiv Masan to join us to moderate. To moderate. This is going to be an exciting discussion. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the very famous Mr. Roundtable, Mr. Rajiv Masan in the house. Nani, always so wonderful to see you. Looking okay. absolutely stunning. Bright Thank and early you. In the morning. Thank you. Rani, this is a this is a special occasion. This is a, a, a You need some help with that? Karan. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request everybody to settle in uh, quickly so we can shut the doors. And it is an absolute pleasure to have these stalwarts amongst us. And I must say, personally, we've, we've, um, we've known uh, Ms. Rani Mukherjee for all the work that she's done. I think she was fabulous in Mrs. Uh, Chatterjee versus Norway. It's, it's really, really amazing. Or uh, I've graduated from, uh, uh, my acting skills come from Mr. Anupam Kher and one thing that he mentioned when I had joined him was that if you want to look at good performances and good acting, you must look at a performance of an actor who, who emotes every single emotion through their eyes and he specifically gave me uh, an example and that was Ms. Rani Mukherjee. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Ms. Rani Mukherjee Before once again. We start, we'd like to play a video please. Yes, before we start, can we have the AV, please? Round of applause for Rani Mukherjee, ladies and gentlemen. And over to you, sir. Rajiv, sir, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. If everyone will settle down, we'll start. Um, Rani, you've had, this, you've had this incredible career. You've been, you've been working for, for, I think, this year you complete 27 years in the movies. Yes. Um, I counted, as a leading lady, you've done roughly 45 films. I'm not counting the guest appearances, the, you know, the, fring the friendly appearances. Um, you won eight Filmfare Awards. You've had a full career. And it doesn't look like you're um, in any mood to slow down, as you shouldn't. Um, your last film, Mrs. Chatterjee versus Norway, uh, was a film that broke that myth that female-centric films won't work at the box office in a post-pandemic world. Those films were not working. Those content-driven films were not making a mark theatrically. Um, they were all m mostly moving to streaming. And here was a film that came and did significant business at a time when those kind of films were not working. They were the tentpole action films that were only working at that time. If you could attribute, Rani, your success and the longevity of your career to one quality, what would that be? I think that one quality would be having faith. Mm. You know, to have faith in the audiences, to have faith in yourself, uh, the fact that we have to constantly work hard on ourselves to improve ourselves right. with each growing film or with each growing day. I think that's been my motto that whatever film I have done, I need to better that in my next film. And to have faith in the audiences that they will give you an answer, whether good, bad, ugly, great. Mm. Um, they are the real critics. Yeah. 
you know to so to say and for them to tell us what they are liking what they are not and the audiences are the ones who actually tell us what the trend of um the mood of the public is like right. you know what are they kind of accepting what are they talking about what are they wanting to spend their hard earned money on which content you know and they are the ones who tell us and decide our longevity right you know it's very interesting what you said you said faith and 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 that brings me to ask you when it's no secret that when um mrs strategy versus norway was ready to be sort of shown to the world uh the producers had offers from some of the big streaming platforms to go straight to digital to go straight to streaming that was the safe option at the time theatrically those films were not working at the box office but you all stuck your necks out you all you all had the faith and uh and and you all were rewarded in the end i want to ask you what um what 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 sort of where did that faith come from so interesting it's not just about having faith that we made a good film it's also about having the faith that it, that people will come yeah so um, interestingly when um, mrs chatterjee was offered to me it was offered to me in the pandemic time uh -huh. but for some reason i was very sure that when the film releases it has to be a theatrical you know and that was put in my contract right so also the makers um were in a position um a little um uh, strange position because when you put that on a contract yeah. then they are bound to do what yeah. is meant in the contract but but i um at one point when there was so much discussion happening at one point i did tell my makers that though you have this in the contract i would not um um uh, enforce it yeah enforce it or stop you from uh, wanting to do a di digital platform because as a producer i yeah. want to be with you and i want to support my producers yeah. in the sense that if you feel that that would be a better business decision for you mm. then might as well because mm. a lot of films that started pre pandemic yeah. in the pandemic time they just decided to release it on ott yeah but this was a film offered to me in pandemic i had put this um contractual clause that i need this to be a theatrical because i believe in the story i believe that this film should reach out to as many people not that if it would stream on ott it wouldn't reach to a lot of people but i think when a film releases theatrically it has a lot more um i would say excitement in terms of there is more um a commitment from an audience mm. that they decide to go make a plan to go to watch the film as opposed to being at home and getting the content yeah, it's appointment easily viewing easily at home yeah. it's like appointment viewing yeah. so for me i think that is a industry that i have grown up in i've started my career in that industry and i thought that my film um should have a theatrical release but i still gave that option but i think somewhere the producers also garnered that faith yeah. during when they f saw my passion saw the film and they said that no rani we want to go with your passion we want to go with your confidence and we will be and i feel that is applaud worthy mm. because even after me telling them mm. that they have the right to veto my contractual clause they still said that we will respect uh, the decision and we will have because we have faith in the film we will go for it theatrically right. especially z producers like they were yeah. uh, distributing the film they were uh, head headlining it z and ma they both were hand in hand and i can only be very eternally grateful for them that they took the step and i can have to thank the audience yeah. that they came in big numbers to see my film so i'm grateful for uh, both the involvement of my producers and my audience so thank you audience yeah. but rani what do you think of streaming as a, you know as as a as a medium today it's a it's a very vibrant medium many of your peers many of your colleagues many of your juniors are are working in both long form series and in films that are made straight for streaming is that something that that interests you uh, of course i think any medium that uh, that has great content would always interest me because when i select a film i'm always looking for that one story that i want people to know hmm. or it's a story that has not been given that much traction when it came a real life story or a story of an inspirational woman because i've always tried to portray strong women characters uh, bring the strong indian woman mm. on a global platform and tell people that here we are these this is what indian women are mm. you know 
and through my career i've done that for the last 27 years so i'm always looking for that a uh, story or that subject or that character that drives me you know and something that i can take inspiration from because i feel that if i take inspiration from a character and if a character is inspiring me for me to play the part mm. i'm sure it will make make a mark on uh, a lot of individuals minds as well right. because there are a lot of youngsters who look for this kind of yeah. inspiration when i was at an age yeah. where i was growing up i was looking for such inspirations through real life people through real heroes through cinema through characters through books yeah. you know so these are things that we look for for you know probably uh, conditioning ourselves as a te teenagers taking inspiration and making our journey yeah. um feel special along the way you know so we need these characters we need these strong women characters who we can connect with and also stories that that are hidden you know if we can spark a conversation through these films mm. or if we can tell people that this is what is going on and give it importance yeah. i think it makes a huge difference so you're saying if the right story came along if the right material came along you're open to doing like a long format series i think i'll be open to do anything that excites me as a person and as an actor i wouldn't i've i've never followed any norm yeah. i've never f um, i don't know it has um, been instinctive in my way that i don't like to follow um, a kind of pattern that uh, i'm supposed to be following but i like to follow my heart and whatever my heart leads me to is something that i've always done you know when people say that is there a secret to how you select your films or is there something uh, that drives you i think it's it's just my emotional core you know something that i kind of relate with because if i have to spend time with a yeah. particular subject uh, for you know 100 days of my life i have to be very passionate about it right. and know? the first place is instinct the first thing is instinct yes instinct because if i um, hear a story or if i hear a character that i instinctively feel connected to you know and that character is speaking something important yeah. or saying something important that is talking for women yeah you know i think that really excites me really after all these years um ha has has your process of picking films changed yes of course because um because when i was in my 20s or in my teenage years um there were different reasons i did films yeah um it was not the same process that yeah. it's now where you are reading scripts and you're taking uh, decisions there were times when the director or producer would just tell us just one line thread story right you know and we were accepting roles yeah. just on those bases yeah. Yeah. there was no story there were no dialogues that were given to us yeah. uh, to prepare beforehand it was just a simple thread ki story ji ye hai ki aisa aisa hota hai aur aisa aisa hoga aur fir end mein aisa aisa ho jata hai so it was just a beginning mid and end right and um, there wasn't like a um conscious effort to even convince us correct <laughs> bound script so there was no concept no because because it was like acha aap ne karenge to koi aur kar lega so we've also been through the um uh time where where we were like i was just accepting films that my parents were like okay rani today you have to go to film city acha kal aapka film sthan mein hai aur aaj aapko um uh yahan pe shooting kar rahi hu aur wahan se aapko udhar jana hai so i've also been through right. an, an age where i don't know better yeah. you know i think wisdom comes with age yeah. so i think when i um started to receive fan mails because at that time social media wasn't there uh, we wouldn't know instantly um we were not told what people were liking or people were not liking there were these letters that used to come yeah. and through my letters i started to realize what my audience wants out of me what they like about my work yeah. which film they liked which film they didn't like it was more in my letters that i read and then i realized that oh my god something that i'm taking as an earns as a means to an end for me like i'm trying to earn probably the jam and butter for my family yeah. but what people are giving me is much more than that they are making me part of their families yeah. they're making me part of their existence they are actually um taking my character seriously so yeah. I think at that point I got a uh, got more serious yeah. and I said okay uh, I think I need to choose my characters uh, more carefully and that's when Satya happened yeah. and um, that's when I realized that uh, 
there is much more to just going to a 9 to 5 job or a 9 to 9 shift, yeah. uh, so to say. Uh, there is much more than just wanting to get back home. So I was this young teenager uh, doing my job. So for me, I used to want my time back home. So I used to be the happiest person when they used to say pack up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that was my teenage years. Those were my young days, you know, where I was, you know, waiting for the director to say, okay, Rani, your work for today is done. And I was like, okay, I need to go back home, right. you know. But then times changed where I used to be wanting to be on a film set, Correct. you know, longer than the required time that right. I've given because I want to be part of the uh, filmmaking process. I want to spend time with my director. I want to spend time with my technician's team. I want to know the process. So it's been a, it's, it's been a, uh, time where I've also evolved with my films. Yeah. Like I've grown up in cinema, like, like I, I, they could say that I'm their child. Yeah. Like I've literally grown up in with them, yeah. so many directors, so many technicians where they've seen me, you've seen me, yeah. uh, young uh, Rajiv, yeah. we were together on a flight yeah. where we were going for the Gulam premiere. That's right. And uh, you've seen me when I was 18 years old. Correct. And now you see me now in my 40s. Yeah. Uh, so you see, you've seen me evolve. So yeah. there are so many people who I've grown up with. I have learned so much from my seniors, from my colleagues, you know, it's just been a learning process. And believe me when I say that, the learning never stops. Yeah. You know, it is a learning that we have to continue. We cannot confidently say that we know it all. Like how many ever number of films you do, how many ever, um, you know, uh, successes you have, but there is the nervousness, there is the, excitement with each release, there is nervous myth, uh, nervousness with each release, there is a sense of learning with each film, with each character, with each people who we meet new and we learn yeah. from. So it's, a, so it's an ongoing process. Rani, um, I want to I zoom out a little bit. You know, um, while the last year was a good year for the Hindi film industry, there were films that did very well, um, I think it's fair to say, and I think most people would agree, that, that we've seen a lot of the s films from the South perform exceptionally well. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, and just the, 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 some of the examples are, of course, Pushpa and Kantara and, and KGF, and filmmakers like Rajamoli and Atli and, and Sandeep Vanga Reddy, they've, they've got their finger on the pulse of the audience in a way that maybe a lot of the Hindi filmmakers, j just the volume of Hindi filmmakers that used to have it don't anymore. What do you think the South filmmakers and the South industry are, uh, is getting right? I think, um, like, in most cases, I would not say all, sure. um, you know, they want to listen to, still to what the audiences want. Mm. Somewhere down the line, maybe when um, there is so much involvement in cinema, you know, when cinema is evolving and everybody's trying to cater to a diverse kind of audience, sometimes you lose in touch with the popular, um, uh, I would say, um, mm. popular uh, or the, um, massive um, want of an audience to s see simple storytelling, yeah. you know, as opposed to storytelling which is more um, diverse or more evolved or more for a certain section of audiences. Right. Um, so I think maybe they are still uh, very simple at heart mm. and they are um, uh, probably connecting with the simple a storytelling that the audiences want from the filmmakers right. and, and that's what they're recognizing and they're doing. Um, I have worked with a lot of South Indian yeah. filmmakers in my career and I've learned a lot from them, yeah. you know. Um, the, the most fascinating part about uh, the South industry is what I see is that there's a lot of unity. Yeah. You know, they stand together, they support each other. Yeah. Like I see so many of these events where, you know, directors are going for each other's, um, you know, uh, Men, music yeah. opening or yeah. their films announcements and they're standing together and they and also actors yeah. you know where they stand and of course it happens in our industry as well um, but I think um, learning as I say you know the, the the beautiful part is when you talk to them they say that they've learned from us yeah. and when you talk to us we say we learn from them and it's always a give and take you know right. um, and what's beautiful here is that um, Indian cinema is learning and looking inwards now, you know, in the middle, they should say that, oh, cinema is inspired from the West or people are copying the West or yeah. they're getting inspired by the West. Today, it's so nice that people are getting inspired by their own, yeah. you know, because we have to make films that have to cater to our audience, you know, yeah. and we have to listen to the voice of our audience. Yeah. Uh, so it's wonderful that we are taking amazing feedback from one another. Yeah. We are getting inspired by each other 
and uh, we are helping each other to be the best versions of ourselves lovely rani you know you're at this incredible vantage point where you're not just one of the top actresses in the industry you're also married to one of the biggest studio bosses in the industry you know that vantage point allows you to have this view of how, what are the challenges today involved in making films where the you know where the entertainment and the film landscape is headed now as someone who has that vantage point as someone who has that perspective what needs to change for the film business to thrive again so i'll give you a small anecdote you know a little story i think people will be uh, i don't know um so i'd say this during the pandemic time so adi had these couple of uh, films that were to be released the yeah. really big films yeah. uh, which were the commercial pot boilers as we say which started obviously in the pre pandemic time yeah. and obviously unfortunately when pandemic started there was a question mark on all the films and that's the time where i observed my husband closely because um there was no talk of films releasing and of course there is a business point of view where each yeah. film needs to release at a particular time right um for it to be able to uh, sustain the yeah. cost that it Correct. has uh, it uh, that. incurred for the film and i remember adi saying that you know and and there was a lot of pressure on filmmakers to release all these films on ott mm. and a lot of filmmakers were doing that you know their biggest films were releasing on ott and i see my husband completely calm and composed and he was like you know with so much conviction so i would use the word conviction mm. uh, that my husband had and he said you know what uh, these movies were made for theatrical for the audiences at large to enjoy and i would want to release these films theatrical he was being offered a lot of money to release yeah. it on ott yeah. you know and it was a um, complete business call where it would be a win win situation for the ott platform and for the producers where he was making profit just releasing it on ott but there i see my husband taking this brave call and saying that no i would not release any of these films on ott because i believe in the um a power of indian cinema of what it does theatrically mm. and in time when the films came all of those films flopped <laughs> yeah because post pandemic you know the the whole um um uh, way audiences were watching, watching content correct, correct. changed overnight yeah. because of ott and the kind of content they saw globally just everything changed mm. and all these films of his that failed at the box office and he took a complete hit yeah. um commercially yeah. because yeah. none of the films did Made well money, yeah. you know and and it was like complete like depression yeah. uh people were sad in our company yeah. and that whole conviction that adi stood with that no my movies will release uh, theatrical we thought that there would be some divine intervention and that he would be rewarded for his conviction of releasing films uh, the theatrically and everything kind of didn't work for us and then came pathan yes and pathan changed the entire um thing for uh, yashraj yeah. and it became the highest grossing film so jab bhagwan deta hai fir chappad phad ke deta hai he just tests you and sees that how much courage you have yeah. and i think adi had that courage and i completely as a colleague of his um i completely salute that yeah. because that i thought was commendable so when you ask me what are the um what needs to change what yeah. needs to change is i think filmmakers need to have more faith in the product that they make mm. and they should believe in what they make and they should stand with each other yeah. um to to make that change you know yeah. and today pathan stood the test of time you know and that just opened the flood gates for people going into cinemas yeah. you know and today again the times are like we're talking like how we spoke in the pre pre pandemic time correct you know yeah we've gone back to the sort of to some degree um to the glory days might be a bit uh, optimistic but normal like, days normal days let's okay. say the normal days okay rani you were only 18 when your first film came out um when you look at this gen z bunch of young actors um do you feel like they could take a page out of you know your generation's book or do you feel like you wish you had their savvy so as i already told you about my start yeah. 
I was clueless. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of certain that this generation is not much more clued in, even if they think so. No, so I always feel that when we as youngsters come into the industry, we always look up to our seniors or we look up to people who have had more uh, experience than us yeah. uh, to basically learn from them. I'm, I'm sure this generation, uh, some of them do uh, want to take a leaf from what we did. But I think because cinema is always evolving, things are always evolving, uh, the kind of filmmaking is like evolving or the way films are made is evolving. Sometimes it gets difficult to actually take a leaf from anybody's uh, career because mm. you have to shape your own career the way you deem fit, Right. you know. So I would say that um, uh, things for them are much tougher today because they want instant gratification through mm. social media. They are also uh, always worried as to what will happen even after a conversation they would have in a public platform. Yeah. So everything is scrutinized much more yeah. and everybody is on tenter hooks as to uh, not make mistakes. Um, and luckily for me, because I'm not on social media, I don't know what's going on. So I say whatever I have to say. <laughs> you know, that was going to be my last question. Um, social media is such an almost integral part of an actor's toolbox today. I mean, they use it to promote their films, promote themselves. It's also a revenue driver today. How do you resist the temptation to not be on Instagram? Because I have a bunch of amazing fans of mine who keep promoting me all the time. <laughs> How lovely. <laughs> Uh, whether or not I promote myself, they are constantly doing that for me. So A, I'm, I'm very lucky to have a um, great fan following and my dedicated uh, fan groups who keep me alive yeah. through this generation as well and remind people who I am. Um, uh, I obviously don't do many advertisements. Yeah. Uh, so obviously I'm not there in the faces of people or on television all the time. So yes, my films kind of do do that work for me. Yeah. Also because um, I like to keep a very simple life for myself. I just feel the more we get engaged in different things, we have to give it our best. That's the way yeah. I am. And uh, I would like to do things where I can give my 100%. Sure. Maybe for social media, I would not be able to give my 100%. So I don't want to take that extra burden, that extra load of what I need to do. Um, so I feel the way it's going, it's great. The fact that people went to see my film, Mrs. Chatterjee yeah. versus Norway, um, makes me happy that they still recognize me and they still know me and they still want to see my film, which is, which is amazing. And um, I would continue to keep wanting to push the bar, keep wanting to push my boundaries as an actor. And, um, and it's always great to uh, uh, keep waiting for that one uh, role of that one character to come by which yeah. inspires me and which will inspire generations to come. Yeah, so that's, that's something that I keep waiting for. Well, one expects nothing less than that from you. Rani thank Mukherjee, you thank you so much. Thank you for the movies, for some incredible performances over the years. I'm told time's up, but I really must say on behalf of the room that you've really inspired us, you've entertained us over the years and you don't stop and you shouldn't stop. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you and thank you to all my audiences over the years who have actually given me so much feedback about my work, about my films. Uh, though you all don't know how much it makes a difference in our lives, it does because we do read it, we do understand, um, you know, what you like, what you don't like and um, for us it's always a learning to know what we can do to better ourselves, to actually better our films and uh, to tell you frankly, everybody in our industry is working day and night to just get some kind of entertainment in everybody's life. So we are working really hard for that. And thank you for being our support through the years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Rajiv sir. Thank you, Rani, ma'am. And trust me, simplicity goes a long, long way, ma'am. Ma'am, one question you, which I want to ask, because when I started the Fiki Frames, ki shuruat ki thi, so, yes, sir, he's been such an inspiration for all of us and yes. been um, uh, part of this journey for Fiki Frames. Adi, sir, when will they come to the stage? How do they come to the stage? Do you have to ask them to them? I was asking this question for the first time, but I was asking them to ask them to ask them to ask them because Big Boss is like a big voice. And he's such an entity, larger than life, and the yeah. man with the plan. So, is it possible you request our way from us? No, I think he was actually... Seventy years ago, I think he came out of the way. Then, seventy years ago, he came out of the romantics. Now, after seventy years ago, he will probably come back to show his face. It's not that you're waiting for him. It's not that you're waiting for him. 
But ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Rani Mukherjee. Thank you. Thank you. Just a photo up, please, both of you, individually, and yes, thank you.